Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, wherever you may be. Welcome to another sportscast here on Lawndale Community Cable. And it is football time. It is fall. Fall is in the air. It's dark. We hope you are doing something positive and creative wherever you are. Tonight, the two Cougars clash against each other. Lawndale Community Cable, Channel 22, Time Warner Community Television, Channel 6, Hawthorne Cable Television, Channel 22. The Crenshaw High Cougars of the CIF City Section take on the Hawthorne High Cougars of the CIF Southern Section from Hal Cap Field in Hawthorne, California. It's Friday night. It's football time. It's high school football time. This is Dave Marks along with Scott Goodman. Deborah Savage roams the sidelines. The Hawthorne cheerleaders on a cool night. Get ready. Two teams coming in that are looking for answers. The home Hawthorne Cougars 0-2 have yet to crack the win mark on this early season. The Crenshaw Cougars are 1-1. One one. Hawthorne with a new coach this year. You will be meeting him very shortly. Crenshaw with a coach who's been there since 1988. And as the game gets set to begin, it is the Hawthorne Cougars that will kick off to the Crenshaw Cougars. And a couple of days ago, in prepping for this ball game, the head coach of Crenshaw, Robert Garrett, who's been there since 1988, said something to the effect of which Cougar will be left standing tonight. So the Battle of the Cougars, the city proper against the southern section, gets underway. Our first telecast of 2002. And are you ready for some football, Dave? And off the opening kickoff. Pretty decent run back. Ball run back by Darrell Richard. And that's where the Hawthorne Cougars make it. The Crenshaw Cougars will we'll probably make that mistake a couple of times tonight. We'll put it in play first and 10. Crenshaw in the white jerseys. The official pointing it out, and uh, they will go for on from scrimmage for the first time. Well, what can you tell us, Scott, about these Crenshaw Cougars, other than the fact that they come from the heart of Los Angeles? Crenshaw has basically been a powerhouse throughout the LA City section for years now. So far this year, they're one and one. Their loss was against Taft, the same team they lost to in the semifinals of the LA City playoffs. They lost this year 38 to 26. They also have one uh, impressive win to their name. We'll get back to that in just one sec as we're getting back to action. And they pitch it back to Damian Hughes. Hughes not getting much on the first carry. Maybe uh, just about a yard past the line of scrimmage. Harthon Cougars with the defense in there. The, the uh, strong point of the Harthon Cougar defense last season was their linebackers. And uh, maybe about a yard or two on the first carry. Good run defense there by the Cougars. Hawthorne, that is. <clears throat> they do have one impressive win so far. Their one win was against La Mirada, who is ranked number two, but they're only in Division 11. Still impressive since they're in the upper echelon of that division. And last year they finished out the season 11-1. As you mentioned before, their coach has been in charge there for 14 years, Coach Garrett, that is. Ryan Thompson, number 12, the quarterback for Crenshaw. Looks to be a second and about seven. On the ground again, same back. Going to turn the corner and get uh, maybe about a yard or so. To bring up about a third and six for the Crenshaw Cougars. All right, Brian Thompson, the starting quarterback for them. Damian Hughes also in the backfield. So far this season, they have had a fairly balanced attack, both on the ground and in the air. And they play in what is called the Coliseum League in the CIF City section, where they play the likes of Fremont and Dorsey. Dorsey Dons won the CIF City section last year on a thrilling game at the Coliseum. Man going in motion on what looks like a passing down, but they'll keep it on the ground. And he's gonna get some yards to the outside and probably have the first down. A little hesitation there, looked like a passing formation, but Hughes gets the carry. He's got the yardage and it's first down for the Crenshaw Cougars. Crenshaw fi finally picked up some running yards there. They actually uh, 
took the running game to the outside, I mean, uh, pardon me, up the middle. The first two attempts, they took it down the sidelines. That wasn't working too well. As you can see, the speed of the Hawthorne Cougar linebackers, the two times they tried to go to the sidelines, when they pounded up the middle, they had just a little bit more luck. So maybe that could be the weak point of the Cougars' defense as the running game straight up the middle. We'll see as the game plays out. Thompson to QB. And a give to the first back through, still on his feet. And grinds a couple of yards into Hawthorne territory. Terry Attaway with that carry there. And talking to Crenshaw's coach Garrett before the game, he said he is the most improved player so far since they opened up stuff this summer. He's their fullback. Second down and about six to go. Opening drive of the ball game, five. Well, the clock, as usual here at Hawthorne, a little difficult to read, but uh, we'll, we'll manage the best we can. We'll just have to guess. Look like somebody may have jumped a little early. They give it to the first back through. And a couple of tough yards. Nothing called. It did look like somebody jumped. Play 12-minute quarters here at the, the high school level. Should be expecting throughout the game to see a lot of different offensive looks here for the Crenshaw Cougars. They tend to run an eye formation, sometimes a split back. And as you've seen, they put a lot of men in motion once they get to the line of scrimmage. We'll see what looks they try to give throughout the game as the game proceeds. Third down and about five. Thompson leads him up. Eye formation in the backfield. And he's going to take it on the option. And some open yardage and a first down. So a good call there on the option. We've seen uh, two successful third down attempts. First running to the outside. And this time the QB option, Brian Thompson, keeps it, gets the first down. And the drive will continue for the Crenshaw Cougars. Opening drive, they took the kickoff right at about the 35-yard line. Now garnered two first downs. Ball resting at about the 31, 32-yard line. First and 10. There's a pitch. Damian Hughes looking to get ahead of steam. Gets it down to about the 23-yard line. A good run to the outside. And a Hawthorne Cougar defense being tested right here on the first series. Chris Payapea, one of the linebackers. Siona Viamonga, the other linebacker, senior in the middle. Terrell Kendall, also a linebacker. Jerry Smith on the line. Michael Shelton on the line. Some of the defense for the Arthon Cougars. This is a start that the Crenshaw Cougars want to get off to. They're eating up a lot of clock here and keeping the Hawthorne Cougar defense on the field. We're about halfway through this first quarter. And I'm pretty sure this was in the game plan, to pound away and keep uh, the Cougar defense out there for a predominant amount of the time. This time he looks to throw. Got a man out there. Pass is complete. And for more, headed for the end zone. And that is going to be a touchdown. And there's Attaway. Like Attaway went that away. Put a little down and dink across the middle. And hard to bring him down. And the opening drive successful for the Crenshaw Cougars. Two first downs. And on a second and about two, they get a touchdown. And so the Hawthorne Cougars are already down six here in this first quarter. As Crenshaw looks to go for the two-point conversion. Well, that touchdown, Dave, that was great composure by Crenshaw Cougars quarterback Brian Thompson. As he had three men blitzing, and they weren't picked up, and they were right in his face as he let go of that ball. He, got a good read there to find that away across the middle. Well, despite the fact that uh, looked like they were going to go for two and they lined up, Kevin Menjavier, the place kicker, Mitch misses the point after touchdown, so it stays six nothing. And uh, what does what does a clock say, Scott? Is that seven? Uh, we're at seven eighteen, almost halfway through the first quarter. Okay, good. We're going to rely on you for that because I can't make this every year. I do games here. I can't, can't, can't do it. Well, for those of you expecting Rufus here, Rufus uh, Washington. He is away on assignment tonight. He has been doing these games since about 1986, 87, a long time. And uh, 
little unusual in our first ball game to not be with Rufus tonight, but we've got Scott nevertheless and Deborah on the sidelines. New program this year for the Hawthorne Cougars, new in a couple of instances. They have dropped down to the Ocean League, Division 10. They've been in the Bay League the past couple of years. They actually won the Bay League regular season title back in 1998. And it's been a struggle the past couple of years. They were four and six last year as they take their first kickoff for the ball game. Squibbed on the ground and goes out of bounds, so they will go on offense for the first time. And coming in at 0 and 2, but they have uh, lost to some very tough teams. Go 0 and 2, lost to Loyola Cubs. That's no joke. Now, see, folks, can you make that out? What is that? That fourth. That third number, what is that? Is that everyone knows what we have to deal with, Dave. Is, is that a, see, they, they think that it's just me and I, I'm just being fussy. Uh, that, that looks like 07J6, <laughs> some sort of bingo number or whatever. And, and what's that bottom where it says home? Now, what is that? A couple, couple of light bulbs missing they need, need to repair, I guess. He needs to get up there with a ladder. Well, back to football, the matter at hand. Raheem Stevens, a junior, starting at QB. And they give the handoff, uh, short yardage. Well, these Hawthorne Cougars going on offense for the first time. Odd play calling there for the special teams for the Crenshaw Cougars. They opted just to pooch the kick. It only went about 10 yards. You'd think they try to kick, kick it deep into Cougar territory to get them to start off deep, but that's not the case as the Hawthorne Cougars are starting off now at the 35-yard line. A decent field position to start off with. And Thomas Brown in the backfield. Stevens, the junior. And it's Brown with it. Brown's going to take it up to about the 35-yard line. A little short yardage on the first two carries for the Hawthorne Cougars. who have had their problems, some very tough opponents the first two games, and it shows losing to Long Beach Jordan, also losing to the Loyola Cubs. Thomas Brown in the prior game against uh, Long Beach Jordan had a breakout game. He was not supposed to be the starting halfback, but he came out with 19 carries for 141 yards in the loss against Long Beach Jordan. The only bright spot of the game for the Cougars last week. Stevens in the shotgun. Got a little time. And it's incomplete. Didn't look like it was anybody out there. Lucky that one wasn't intercepted. Stevens took a lick at the end of that play, and that's not a good sign. He's already missed one game due to injuries. His offensive line's going to have to give him a little bit of a help here tonight. Or he could end up back in the hospital like he was after the week one game against the Loyola Cubs. A couple of the Hawthorne Cougars are getting banged up after that one. They chose to play a very tough preseason schedule as they just get the punt away. Bobble momentarily. And he's down the sideline. Damian Hughes, some decent yardage after bobbling it, gets it up to the 40. That'll be first and 10 for the Crenshaw Cougars. Their second possession of the night. Based on Coach French statements, Dave, uh, we just saw the strong point of the Hawthorne Cougars right there in their punting game. As when I spoke to him beforehand, before the game, he said basically that's the only strong point the team has showed this year. That's not a good sign. So he wasn't just being smart, he was being for real, apparently. Mm -hmm. And the first back through. And the man who scored the touchdown, Adway. It's short yardage, gets about a yard. It's the first run up the middle we've seen so far that's been stopped for a short game. Maybe a French and a defensive coaching staff made a few adjustments there, which they're going to need to based on that last drive. Coaching Brain Trust, French, the man on the far right of your screen. Coached, Ingle, coached at Inglewood the past couple of years. They've had some success. And the short pass is complete. Looks like they got about four yards out of that pass uh, up on the right. Bryant Thompson, QB. So it brings up third down at about five. Crenshaw two for two on third down conversions. Their first drive resulted in a score. Crenshaw line.
lining up with two men in the backfield. And a strut and a cut and a first down. There's Damian Hughes running against the 4-3 defense. And he takes it right to the 45-yard line of the Harthorn Cougars in Cougar territory. So they are three for three on third down conversions. Dave, as we brought up previously about the Long Beach Jordan game, uh, weird circumstances happened last week. Both Rasheem Stevens and their backup quarterback, Richard Batimo, were both out, and they had to have star wideout Richard Goodall start a quarterback, which was not a pretty thing, as he only racked up uh, 21 passing yards, going two for seven. So as you can tell, it was a pretty brutal game offensively-wise for the Hawthorne Cougars in a game that they were expecting to come in and compete with Long Beach Jordan. Yeah, normally, Long Beach Jordan, I mean, not, not to take anything away from them, but uh, it's a little different from playing Long Beach Poly. Let's just put it like put it like mm -hmm. that, without uh, being as politically correct as we can. But you can't do much when you got both of your uh, QBs banged up and hurt. It's the early part of the year, of course. They won't get into league play for another two weeks, or so. Here's a second and about nine. Pitch back. He looks like he wants to throw. And he is wide open downfield. And all he had to do was catch it and go into the high strut for the touchdown. It's Darryl Stovall getting the pass from Damian Hughes. And, uh, well, you got to like the play calling. Second and long, I mean, you figure it's a passing situation, but uh, not that kind of a pass. <laughs> that was brutal secondary defense there by the Cougars as the safety just bit for that play fake right there, and the uh, wideout was wide open downfield. There was no one within about 20 yards of him. The secondary just bit on that play call. As you can see here, there's no one even near him. The well, nearest man was about 15 to 20 yards near him. And was it winning? It looked like Marcus Whittington, the one who, as you said, bit on it. And they go for the two-point conversion. That's no good. So they're not able to add insult to injury, but they're up 12 to nothing. And we are still here in the first quarter. So two possessions, two scores. First one consuming up some time. This one coming on a uh, very good call. And it's 12 zip. So at this particular point, the Hawthorne Cougars just trying to stay in this thing as long as they possibly can. Tough road ahead of them. Real tough road. Coach Garrett before the game basically stated that if Crenshaw Cougars play their game and just stick to their game plan and do everything they're supposed to do, they will leave here how cap filled with a W. And so far it's looking that way. Marathon trying to get something done here on the kickoff. Flag on the play. And usually in that situation, depending on where they threw it, it's usually a block in the back. And it's going to be a hold hold on the kicking team, so they will probably elect to set them back a little bit. So the Cougar line, led by Jesus Diablo so far, Crenshaw Cougar line, that is, it's done a superb run blocking job. And then open up big holes for the Cougar offense so far. The Hawthorne Cougars are going to have to get something started here on the offensive side of the ball. And they're going to start from a deep hole. So Raheem Stevens, single back in the backfield. Want to keep it on the ground. Got a little head of steam. And it's Brown getting decent yardage. Best carry of the night, they'll get about six yards. And it'll bring up a second and four. This is the first ever meeting between the Crenshaw Cougars and the Hawthorne Cougars. So neither team had advantage in regards to scouting each other out, uh, unless they had previously videotapes from uh, years occurring beforehand. And it's kind of reputation, especially for Crenshaw, reputation precedes them in many ways. On the ground again, but not very far. 
not much this time. Jamal Scott, Kristen Thomas, Harold Washington there on that front line for the Crenshaw Cougars. For many years, basically the Hawthorne Cougars' main competition and rival, as a lot of you folks here who watch these games know, are the losing or Olympians. But uh, this year, they're not in the same league or in the same division. Losinger stays in Division Three and in the Bay League. Hawthorne Cougars down to Division Ten, Ocean League, but they will play each other. They're gonna, of course, you know they're still gonna play that battle for the uh, Mayor's Cup. They'll do that here, the last game of the regular season in November. And there's the catch, and he eludes one man. Getting down the sideline for some good yards. So a good catch and a nice slippery play made. As Thomas Brown out of the backfield. And he was able to elude the first tackler and that's what sprung him for all of that extra yards. Solomon Alamian was a linebacker in there that had the first shot at him for Crenshaw but once he got by him, had some valuable real estate. He gets it to the 40 yard line and the best play of the night so far for the Hawthorne Cougars. Well executed screen pass there by the Hawthorne Cougars. First big pick up of the game. Single back in the backfield, wide receiver split to both sides. Got some time over the middle and it's, that one is almost picked off and returned the other way. And Damian Hughes had a glove mitt on that one. He gets that, he takes it to the house. But they did have a little good, good time as he stepped up in the pocket there, able to get it off. And you get the feeling now Crenshaw, because of that first down there, rather Hawthorne because of that first down, bolstered somewhat perhaps, beginning to find a little rhythm. Second down and 10 to go. Crenshaw rushing four down linemen. Go to the draw this time, and a big hole up the middle is Brown. Getting into the secondary. And he looks like he's got a first down across the midfield line, so the draw that time. Keeps him off balance a little bit, and he looks like he got a spot at the 48-yard line of Crenshaw. But hold everything. As they used to say on the Dick Tracy cartoons, hold everything. Flag on the field. And an illegal formation is going to set that one back. Well, uh, it seems like when you're 0-2 and you're losing and you're having a tough year, you make a good play as uh, you look at the expressions on the assistant coach's faces. You make a play like that, and what happens? They throw the hanky. So if you're wondering why the Hopper Cougars offense attack and been a, hasn't been as strong as previous years, one of the reasons today is those star linemen Luke Lampedi, the six foot four, 331 pound senior, is out. He's out with an injury. The best run blockers out for the game, but one of the things that runs the best is the strongest defense. A rush just gets that one off. Not much time to throw that time as the rush came on. Raheem Stevens sent the blitz up the middle. So it's going to be a third down and about 15. Clock running down here in the first quarter. And I believe that is the last play of the first quarter. So that is it. One quarter in the books. And it's 12 nothing in favor of the Crenshaw Cougars over the Hawthorne Cougars here at Halcap Field. Well, I believe uh, if you you were saying something about Raheem Stevens, we're having a little bit of trouble hearing hearing Scott. We'll we'll get that taken care of. Well, Michelle, we'll we'll get that worked out. As it is the first game, I believe you were trying to talk about Raheem Stevens, the quarterback. Salim Stevens used to be the starting quarterback in the year 2000. 
And I believe you prefaced it by asking me, did I remember? Yes, I, I do remember. How about that? So here's a third down with uh, Raheem, younger brother, out of the shotgun and Brown going in motion. Rush, they're going to try to set up the screen. The ball is fumbled. Is that a live ball I, or is it going to be an incompletion? So it's an incomplete pass as they attempt to set up the screen. And while they talk about the punting game being the best aspect of their game so far, so for the second time tonight, we'll get to see the Hawthorne Cougar punter. And he'll be asked to get them out of deep, out of the deep. So they set up the run. There's the run to the outside, down the sideline, looking for some more blockers, and a good run with no, looks like no handkerchiefs on the field. Oh yes, yes, right at the end. And you gotta wonder who that one is on. Damian Hughes with a good run back. So as we get things adjusted here, as the Crenshaw Cougars head coach on the far side of the field. Pick it up, pick the flag up. And this one is gonna go, it looks like against, uh, or maybe they're just gonna say pick it up, no foul. No harm, no foul, so it'll be first and 10. Well, the Crenshaw Cougars already leading 12, nothing. And they've got it at the 42. Back to throw. The man deep, and it's incomplete. Trying to lead the receiver down the sideline, and he's not there. Looking that time for Keith Lytle. On the incompletion, it brings up second and 10. Arthon Cougars have done just about everything well in this first half, scoring on their first two possessions. Now a second and 10, and if tradition holds, you'll probably see some sort of a run here. This, of course, is usually a passing down, but uh, may see some sort of uh, something sort of unusual. Let's look for it. And they do keep it on the ground. And he breaks the tackle down the sideline. So in what is normally a passing situation, they give it to Damian Hughes. He's got a big first down. And he'll get it down to the 24-yard line for the Crenshaw Cougars. Well, we're having a little difficulty hearing Scott, but uh, we're going to put out a call to uh, one of the union people. Let's see, one of the the micro, someone from the microphone union to come up and do it, do a job. Let's let's let me go on my let me get on my cell phone and call somebody if I can. Get somebody. Uh, oh, where where is my cell phone? I can't seem to can't can't seem to find it. But we'll get it. We'll get it worked out. We'll. Uh, I'll share mine with, with, with you, for, I, I guess. <laughs> Second down and about seven. I'm, I'm kind of worried about where my cell phone is now. A <laughs> little, little problem. First, first game of the year. That cell phone doesn't belong to me, and i got to find it now. So we'll just kind of uh, keep you informed here. Second down and seven for the Crenshaw Cougars. And they give it to the big back coming through. Going to take it to the 22-yard line. And that's Adway, Darry Adway, who scored the first touchdown of the night on a long run. And it'll bring up a second down. Second and about seven to go. Or these Crenshaw Cougars with a big offensive line. 
strength of the Hawthorn Cougars has been their linebackers, and they've been tested. A little short drop and a pass to the left side. It's taken by Stovall, Darrell Stovell. And he gets it to the 15, or make it the 20-yard line. They'll bring a third and about five to go. We're in Lawndale Community Cable, channel 22. And you are watching this game either on a Sunday morning or a Monday night, if you're watching it on channel 22. Could be watching it at another time. And he's into the secondary for what looks to be close to a first down. And Crenshaw Cougar is on another scoring thread here from Hal Cap Field. This man's had a good night so far. Damian Hughes. Crenshaw Cougar is a perennial, as we mentioned earlier, perennial CIF city section power. They were in the championship game two years ago. Looks like somebody moved there on, on the line. Somebody on the right side of the line moved. And unfortunately, sometimes the only time you mention the offensive lineman is when they do something like that. Brandon Mabane and DeAndre Turner. That'll march him back five yards. Bring up the second and about 15. Under six minutes to go in second quarter, first half. 12 nothing. Pound it into your heads. And a little problems with the snap. Flags flying all over the place. Maybe a delay a game. False start. Well, the Crenshaw Cougars backing up somewhat. This is their most gremlin play drive of the ball game so far, and they're going to take a timeout to talk it over. So they have the big lead, and they just want to get themselves composed. There you take a look at the press box. And the Crenshaw Cougars coach. Been there for many years. I'm leading 12 to nothing. Graduated from Jefferson. Robert Garrett went to Jef Jefferson High and uh, the college in Nebraska, Concordia College in Nebraska. The Cougar mascot. This is their second home game of the year. And it's still early. A lot of people just getting adjusted to early football season. And I think we've got Scott is, has returned from, from the beyond, and he, he should be with us. And back on earth, I believe. So it's second down. I think think we're hearing you. Oh, wait a minute. They're not hearing you in the truck yet, Will Robinson? OK. Well, they're, they're going to they're gonna work on that. So we've had two penalties to set them back at a timeout. It's second down and about 20. Three men in the, back, in the backfield. They snap it to one of the backs, and he's going to run through and pick up close to a first down. They just snapped that one straight back to Damian Hughes. You saw that interesting formation. And uh, they're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at the Hawthorne Cougars. So that makes up just about all of that penalty yards. Penalty yardage. And it's going to bring up second down. And there we go. See, see the three backs. And they snap it just straight back to Damian Hughes. It's one of those situations where the defense is like, uh, what do we do here? This time they give it to the fullback. He fumbles the ball. That ball is loose. And here come the Hawthorne Cougars running the other way. Running down the sideline, now trying to cut back toward the middle of the field. And the fumble recovery. Fumble recovered by Anthony Bell, the junior. Anthony Bell recovered the fumble right at about the five yard line. And so far, that is the biggest play of the night. 
Adway coughs it up. Looked like he was hit hard at the end of that play. And as Bell with the return, he takes it up to about the 45-yard line. So a 40-yard return there. You see right at the end, it spills on the ground. And there's Bell, picks it up at the five. So far, the most fortuitous play of the ball game for the Crenshaw Cougars. We'll see if their offense is able to capitalize. Raheem Stevens will go to work on it. First and 10 from their own 40. Flankers to the right side. Brown in the backfield. On the ground they go. About a yard. Thomas Brown coming out of there. 5.42 to go in this first half. If this is going to any what resemble a ball game, the Hawthorne Cougars are going to have to do something right at about here, trailing 12 to nothing. If they can take advantage of the opportunity, the gift that they were given. As for all intents and purposes, this was headed toward 18 or 20 to nothing. Before halftime, now they've got a chance to do a little something about it. Back to throw. Hockett's going to collapse, and he's going down. So they are looking at third and about 15. As they lose about six or seven yards on that play. So everybody stayed home, rushed the QB that time. Nobody went for the fake downfield. Now it's the big third and 15 from the 40-yard line. Arthur Cougars trying to stay in the ball game, trying to get a little momentum off of that forced turnover. Looks like they're going to drop in coverage. Send somebody up the middle, and is there going nowhere. And on top of that, I believe we have a fumble, and the Crenshaw Cougars have recovered. So how about that? The man who coughed it up recovers. So it's been a fortuitous night for the Crenshaw Cougars. Darry Adway, who coughed it up on the five-yard line. Now he recovers the fumble, and... He's got a chance to put his Cougars back in business. First and 10 from the Hawthorne 38, 39 yard line. Play is blown dead. I believe they want to make sure they've got the correct spot, correct mark on the field. And a timeout taken. So a break in the action, 12 nothing, in favor of the Crenshaw Cougars. We apologize for the fact that we're not able to hear Scott's pearls of wisdom because we, we could use some right at about this time. Scott reminds you, uh, for those of you who watch the TV, or that very famous computer commercial where the guy says, dude, you're getting a... Uh, Scott reminds you a little of that, that guy. Uh, we, we're not going to mention the name of, of, of the uh, product. But he's... Uh, well, no, th that guy reminds me more of Eddie Haskell, but this guy, Scott's not actually an Eddie Haskell character. Scott's cooler than that. And he is well prepped this evening, but uh, unfortunately, and they, they do mean unfortunately, it takes the telecast down by the fact that we're not able to get some of that uh, true flavor he was going to provide us tonight. But we'll, ha we'll have him in the second half. Have plenty of time. And, oh, that was almost intercepted. But they hold on, and they're going to pick up what should be a first down on a ball that was almost picked off. So the Hawthorne Har Cougars, Ryan Thompson, just uh, by the Crenshaw Cougars, just getting it off that time. And that one was very close to going the other way. But instead, it's a first down. First and 10 from the 26-yard line. And running toward the right side, into the clear, headed for the end zone, and headed for the touchdown. 
So they snapped it to Bryant Thompson, the quarterback, in the shotgun formation. Just took it off the right side, and uh, the Hawthorne Cougars look like at this point they don't know what's hitting them. 18 nothing. Four possessions, three touchdowns. One stop coming on a fumble recovery that they were not able to capitalize on. And someone from our crew before the ball game asked me, he said, Dave, uh, is this going to be a blowout tonight or what? He was saying, what's it going to be, 55 to 5 in favor of Crenshaw? And I told him, well, probably not that bad, but uh, still here in the first half as they go for the two-point conversion. And Hawthorne looks sort of clueless. But they're able to stop him on the two-point attempt. So Bryant Thompson not able to get into the end zone. It'll stay 18 to nothing. So 18 zip. Still in the second quarter, first half. On what looks to be at this point a long night. Here's the touchdown run. Got to bring him down, grabbing at the shirt. And Bryant Thompson. Makes it 18 to nothing. So Hawthorne with another opportunity. They'll be receiving the kick. And we mentioned how big that last possession was when they recovered the fumble. Had a chance to at least do something before halftime to cut the score, which was 12 nothing in half, make it 12-6. And instead, the man who fumbles the ball is able to recover, and it leads to another score. At this point, the Hawthorne Cougars as dead as Scott's microphone. We'll see if uh, both are able to revive. And he cuts back Thomas Brown. And flag comes in there late after the play. All dead on the 32-yard line. We'll see what the uh, flag is about. And... Uh, it's going to go against the Hawthorne Cougars. So after a decent run, it's going to set them way back, almost into the shadow of their goal post. And unlike the NFL, where the clock runs once you put the ball back in play, here the clock stops on everything unless you just keep it on the ground. So that makes this half even longer. Why college and high school games tend to drag out a lot, a lot longer than pro games do. And a short gain there by Thomas Brown. Thomas Brown, the senior. He's gotten the bulk of the carries tonight. And so far, three drives, no scores. Second down and nine. Clock showing right at the six-minute mark of the second quarter. That's if we can believe it. And Stevens with a second and nine. Rush coming from the outside, and he's going nowhere. He's plowed through the line like it did not exist. And that big Crenshaw front line doing the, doing the job. Harold Washington, Jamal Scott, Christian Thompson. Rushing four, four down linemen. And it is beginning to look kind of ugly. Almost a situation where you say to yourself, what can the Hawthorne Cougars do to at least make some sort of showing? Had their opportunity after recovering that fumble. And this is a situation where even though you need to pass to get long yardage, I want to just hand it off to get, get out of it. There's nobody in the backfield. Now they get the little dump off. 
not going to go very far. And that one of those, uh, it's kind of a safety play. I mean, it's you try to drop back and pass, you're not going to get much. You try to run, you're not going to get much. So they just throw it uh, off on the right for the short yardage. And as we mentioned earlier, the punter being the star of the team so far this year will get a chance to take center stage once more. Try to get them out of trouble. They rush it, but he's able to get it off. And starting out at the 40. Little duke and a juke. And he gets it to the 42 yard line. And now another flag will be thrown in way late after the run by Damian Hughes. And Crenshaw is heading back. So it'll probably be on them. And they're pointing in their direction. So here on a Friday night in the city of Harthon. Air a little cool. And not much for the Hawthorne crowd, home crowd, to cheer about. Three fifty-two, as you see. J eight oh seven, or whatever that is. It's interesting. I wonder how much those light bulbs cost, and, and whose salary do they take it out of? Well, this is a big penalty. It's a big personal foul. It's going to set them way back. And I guess the only question is, will the Crenshaw Cougars score before the end of the half? Ryan Thompson in the shotgun. Will they snap it to him? He wants to throw, gets it complete, and down the sideline with some big yards to Damian Hughes. So Thompson and Damian Hughes. They'll get about nine yards close to a first down. Left side of bound to stop, stop the clock. Keep it on the ground and an easy first down. Dari Adwe has had a touchdown and a fumble and then a fumble recovery. And they're out to about the 40 yard line, their own 40. Crenshaw Cougars thinking about uh, their season in the Coliseum League battles with their foes, the Dorsey Dons, who won the L.A. City section last year. On the last play of the game at the Coliseum on a blocked punt. Back to throw. Going deep, and it's picked off. Interception. And the Harthon Cougars have got the ball. Ball picked off by Richard Badiyama. So that time, the double coverage. And the senior able to get it. So if nothing else, it keeps the Crenshaw Cougars from scoring again before the end of the half. And with it 18-0. And they had him. He's playing, playing deep. And on the overthrow, he's right there. Good coverage, short and long that time. And they deny Crenshaw another score. Raheem Stevens, QB for the Hawthorne Cougars. Single back in the backfield. Trying to option it. He bounces it. That's a free ball. Recovered by Crenshaw. And run out of bounds. Unless they're going to rule it incomplete. Well, they rule it incomplete. And that's a huge break. It wouldn't have been a touchdown. It would have been Crenshaw ball first and goal right at about the 10-yard line. Interesting play, but no execution. 
Anthony Bailey, the man that recovered, but they say uh, incomplete pass. And in listening to the new head coach this year, Mr. French, of course, Martin French. You know the old cliche about what do you think about your team's execution? He is just the sort of person who would say that's not a bad idea. I just met him recently. That seems to be seems to be his personality. Over the middle, and he's got the man out there, and the catch is made. So the man who came up with the interception makes the nice catch over the middle, and that's first down. Richard Batamana, the senior. Clock stops. Has time to throw again, the rush comes, and he's gonna hit another receiver, and he's gonna have another first down. So some big, big ca catches, and it looks like we're going to have a roughing call coming in at the end. So that time, Brian Goodall, senior on, on the catch. Now they're marching. Let's see what this call is. Ineligible man downfield. Looked like they could have gotten a roughing call, but instead, uh, ineligible man downfield, so two good plays. Second play goes for naught. Starting to get a little momentum. And you also have to wonder at this stage of the half, yell their, yelling their lungs out on a Friday night, you have to wonder if the Crenshaw defense is playing that, uh, well, we're, we'll give you a little something, but we're not going to let you score. This time they're rushing five down linemen. Good all going in motion. And they hit him across the middle. So he came in motion, down and in. They'll line it up quickly. Got some of that yardage back. Crenshaw taking their time, getting up to the line of scrimmage. Now we get whistles as they want to sub people in and out. They may have to take a timeout. Looks like a timeout has been called. By who, we do not know. They did not give the signal, but uh, someone definitely did call time. Probably Crenshaw, but the officials didn't point in their direction. They were the ones that looked like they were having problems getting lined up, getting people in and out. So that is the situation. Our next telecast here at Lawndale Community Cable, we will be at Losinger when they play tough Redondo team this year in the Bay League. Dondo picked by many to have a fine year in Bay League play. And that'll be our next ball game, next game coming up. Redondo at Losinger. As we speak, Losinger is playing a team from Las Vegas at their home field. And right here tonight, it's the Hawthorne Cougars. Crenshaw at Hawthorne. This, uh, Week three of the high school season, a game that the Daily Breeze picked as a game to watch. So far it has not been that unless you are a Crenshaw Cougars fan. Back to throw, looking to get the man in stride and he just overthrows him. Trying to lead receiver down the sideline that time, not able to get there. And it's uh, Robert Love, a junior. So it brings up a third and about six to go. Two oh one to go till halftime. I'm going to drop into coverage. Rush four people. Catch is made over the middle. Going to try to run back and see if he'll get yards. He does have the first down. So he had the first down. And fortunate for Brian Goodall that uh, he didn't run back too far, that he lost the positive yardage that he gained. So they get the first down in the air. And you kind of get the feeling, although they're down 18 to nothing, maybe the Hawthorne Cougars finding a little bit of rhythm. 
which is so important, kind of getting off up off the mat. Back to throw. Over the middle, bobbled, and it is incomplete, almost picked off. Flags fly all over the place. That was a tip ball downfield. And we'll have to see what the flag is about. They were looking for Don J. Lampity that time. Calling offensive pass in, in pass in offensive pass interference. So another big penalty on this offensive drive. Miss a huge one. Set them way back. Two major ones on this drive for the Hawthorne Cougars. But if you're looking for anything positive that can come out of this with 135 still to go, it is that they're finding a little bit of rhythm, beginning to assert themselves somewhat. Referee stop time right now to have a discussion. That is about the only thing you, good thing you can say out of this. Maybe a question about the spot is uh, he looks clueless. And we'll have you know out there with this being our first ball game of the year, a lot of things being worked out tonight that we joke about uh, fact that Scott's microphone not working but this uh, situation where it's a dry run for a lot of a lot of folks it's a dry run for the crew and for everybody involved for a lot of folks that work these uh, particular broadcasts this is not the only thing that they do all day as you can imagine they spend the rest of their time at the racetrack but that's beside the point second down and long and it's incomplete Throwing it over the middle, nobody there. I guess the point I'm trying to make, we're not, we're not making excuses, of course, but this is not uh, a multi-million dollar production where we uh, have people that sit around all day and work on these things, and you have 10 people sitting around in an office with nothing to do, and you can call one of them up. It is very tough to put these games together, and a lot of people do give some valuable time to do it. And they make a sacrifice and a commitment, and, and on occasion things can go wrong, just like on your jobs out there, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, are you perfect every day on your job? I don't think you want to go there, do you? I know I'm not perfect every day on my job. Third down and uh, ball thrown over the middle. That's going to be incomplete. So this time, uh, last couple of times, they were able to get the ball off, but uh, nobody there in particular, and it's going to lead to another punt. And with uh, about a minute and 10 seconds to go, if, any, if you, anything decent you can say about that drive is at least they showed a little life, a little heart. But the key right here is going to be with uh, this minute, eight seconds to go in a half as, uh, well, I don't know if, the, if it, this was a design fake. I think the rush just came and he couldn't get it off. Not able to get it off. Ryan Goodall. And uh, he's, what the point I was going to make would be with this little bit of time left in the half, the last thing you would want to do is get scored on. And last thing you want to do is give them an opportunity. With 106 to go in the first half, it's 18 to nothing. Crenshaw over Hawthorne, and we're going to come back with more football right after this. Welcome back to Hawthorne, California. Dave Marks along with Scott Goodman and Deborah Savage. Under a minute to go, it's second down and 10. The Battle of the Cougars, Crenshaw and Hawthorne. Crenshaw with an 18-0 lead. They've got the ball. And a little pass complete. Ryan Thompson finding his man. Now right at the end, this thing fumble, and uh, the Hawthorne Cougars have it. So fumble right at the end of the play. Hawthorne Cougars have the ball. For the timeout, we were saying that uh, the worst thing that can happen from Hawthorne's perspective, being down 18 to nothing, would be to have Crenshaw score on them again with uh, the waning seconds of the half. That would really take away any little bit of momentum that they may be getting. The last offensive possession Showed signs of life, but they were set back by two huge penalties. 
it's not for those two penalties. They might have been knocking on the door. And the last thing you would want is to get up off the canvas and get knocked right back down again by getting scored on at the end of a half. That one, uh, well, that didn't get off too, <laughs> too good from the start. No fumble fingers there on the, on the snap. Raheem Stevens. And with the fact that they were completing a lot of those passes over the middle, I have to think that the Crenshaw defense has made the adjustment. Second down and 10. About the 26-yard line, Raheem Stevens, the QB. Trying to hook him down the sideline, and it's incomplete. A little one-on-one -on -one there. Thomas Brown going down the sideline. And he's in the little foot race. Looks like Gardner McKay was covering him for Crenshaw. So it's third and 10, 37 seconds to go. Until halftime. And on top of that, it looks like uh, some yards of marking off yards against, uh, yes, they are. I mean, some big penalties for uh, Hawthorn in this first half. That's another big one right here. So third and very long to go. Now just keep it on the ground, keep it safe. And Crenshaw may elect to take a timeout if they have one left. And uh, looks like they're going to do that. 29 seconds to go. And uh, actually it's going to be a call against Harthorn. So they're going to be lucky to get out of this half without being scored on one way or the other, either with a snafu, blocked punt, or some sort of return by Crenshaw. Two big, five major penalties on their offense in the last two possessions. And this, this foul was after the, after the play. Martin French having to deal with the situation. Are going to be on and off? Do they know what they want to do? Well, they want to punt, apparently. And they get it off. Chasing Hughes back. That'll kill some time. And they'll recover, so they are able to get the punt off, and that is going to be the last play of the half. As the clock looks like it has run out, and the first half is over. So it was pretty much all Crenshaw in the first half. Although Hawthorne did show some signs of life in their last two offensive plays, they've got a lot to talk about at the half. As they go into the locker room, trailing 18 to nothing. So, with one half in the books here from Hawthorne, California, our first game of the year, we'll come back with the second half. 18 nothing, Crenshaw over Hawthorne. Back with more after this. Wait, wait. Dave Marks along with Scott Goodman. One little more? Well, you're going to get a little more. 18 nothing as uh, we're at halftime. And the Harthon Cougars will be getting the second half kick with a chance to try to do something about it. It was the first half that saw them begin to wake up somewhat in their last two offensive possessions, set Coach French. back by many penalties. Ready? Coach French. And we're going to Deborah on the sidelines. Coach French, how do you feel about the game first half, the refereeing? 
Uh, the referee, you know, refs do what they do, but these guys are bad. You know, they're just bad. You know, it's not like we're a great team, but we need our breaks. You know, I'm not asking for them, but if, you know, you can't. The guy said it was a pass interference. My guy's going this way, and the ball's going that way. I mean, just, you know, just the angle of it alone. The referee sucks. Well, now tell me this, Coach. What did you say to your team in the uh, locker room to get them fired up for the second half? Oh, I told them either come out and play tough or all the seniors are gone. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Back to you in the studio. Well, I think we need the delay button when we're going to talk to Michael French. As you can <laughs> see, uh, uh, colorful, certainly not the word for it. Uh, very, uh, well, he's not, uh, not in the Mike Ditka mold as of yet, but very animated with a big job to do here, trying to, wow, going to fire the whole senior class? Wow. That, that, that's big. <laughs> well, they've got their work cut out for them, down 18 to nothing to a very tough Crenshaw Cougar team here. From the city section, Dave Marks along with Scott Goodman. Hawthorne this Cougars is, back this in is the Dave shotgun. as the Harthon Cougars are on the field. 19 in motion. And that one's off the back of the official. Well, uh, maybe the coach drew it up that way. How about that? Talked, talked about him at the half. And uh, first play from scrimmage here in the second half. First path, pass, Raheem Stevens. Looking over the middle, and he gets the referee right in the back. And the view Coach French has on the ref so far, I'm pretty sure he thinks they drew that one up on purpose. <laughs> so second and ten. Just underway here in the second half. Arthon Cougars and the Crenshaw Cougars. Those cheerleaders belong to the Harthon variety. And they give on the quick delay. Thomas Brown trying to stutter step, not going to get very far. Thomas Brown has done the bulk of the ball carrying for the Harthon Cougars. And you Raheem. have to wonder, Dave, being that Thomas Brown is a transfer from Redondo, where would this offense be without him? He's been the only bright spot uh, basically the whole season for the Cougars so far. So if he was nowhere near this uh, Cougar team. Who would wonder what would be going on with the Cougars offense? Third and about nine. Stevens in the shotgun. Brown going in motion. Gets a good snap. Looks like he wants to take it. Going to wrap the ball around. He dropped it, but they're going to say incomplete. And he's uh, down right or just down by contact, so he'll lose yardage. It'll go as a sack. And the Harthorn Cougars are three and out to start this third quarter. And they'll give it right back to the Crenshaw Cougars. Cougars showed some bright spots near the end of the second half there as they completed a better portion amount of their passes. Uh, pretty much quick screens and quick dropout passes. But uh, Crenshaw was all over the wideouts for the Cougars. There was not too much YAC yards after catch for the Cougars wideouts. Uh, so good tackling and good defense so far by the Crenshaw Cougars. And following the punt by Crenshaw, rather by Hawthorne, the Crenshaw Cougars will put it in play first and 10 from their own 48. Going on offense for the first time in the third quarter. Bryant Thompson has been there, starting quarterback Damian Hughes and Darry Odway. The two backs. Thompson brings him up. And he's met uh, for about a two yard gain. An Adway carry. He's had one touchdown tonight. Big offensive line Ricardo Bethe, Brandon Jefferson, Jesus, or rather, Jesus Dialba. Sean Porter and Brandon McBain up front. So a Crenshaw give the pitch back. Damian Hughes down the sideline. Takes it to the 35 on the pitch. Well, the Crenshaw Cougars, a big line. They may appear to be uh, just a lot more athletic than the Harthon Cougars, at least thus far. First and 10 from the 35. It's Brandon Jefferson, number 72, you saw there. 
Give it to the first back through. He'll get about three or four yards. Daria Adway on the carry. Coming out on offense so far in the second half, the Crenshaw Cougars are going to different strategies. They're just basically pounding the ball in the middle. Maybe they're just trying to run the clock out here in the second half and come away with a 16 to nothing lead. Maybe they're not going for a little more ketchup on the hot dog. Maybe they want to keep the score just how it is and run down the clock. This is how they started off in the first half, just pounding the ball away. Let's see if they continue with this strategy. Second and about seven. Gonna throw one that he catches from behind. Now gonna have to do a little duke and a juke and gets away from a couple of tackles and gets some positive yards. Damian Hughes with a catch way behind the line of scrimmage. He had to run back to catch it. And when all is said and done, he's gonna get only about two yards out of it, but could have been a disaster. Could have gone for a loss or a possible turnover. Instead, it's about third and six to go. Nice cut back there by Hughes. This is the type of footwork you want to see in your halfback. Thompson on the right side. Man wide open. We have a flag on the play. So the catch made by Michael Lyons, but let's see what this handkerchief is about. indication yet. Well, they're calling off the flag. So that'll give him a first down. Drive will continue. And they'll put it down at about the 10 yard line it looks like. First and goal inside the 10 from about the nine. Got to stay up stay alive one way in the stands. And is getting no place. Damian Hughes with the carry. And a nice tackle made that time. Chris Payapea from the linebacker position. That's one of the three strong linebackers that the Cougars uh, show in their linebacking court. We need them to step up big here in the second half if the Cougars are going to get back in this ball game. Uh, that's supposed to be the strong asset of the strong asset of the Cougar defense. Chris Payapea, Mate, aka Muli Lasiki, and Mama Tufing, three linebackers for the Cougars. Rolls out and throws the ball off on the right side on the rollout, and catching it Stanley Collins for Crenshaw, six positive yards. Third down and goal for Crenshaw, ball at about the five yard line. So the Crenshaw Cougars uh, have a predominant amount of their wide receivers are sophomores and juniors, but they've done a superb job here. We haven't seen any, too many drop catches and from the looks of it, they've been running their routes precisely. So you gotta give your hats off to them. Third and goal, straight up the middle, headed for the end zone, and it's gonna be a touchdown. Barry Adway with the four yard draw. And it's 24 to nothing in favor of the Crenshaw Cougars, going for some extra points. They missed on a one point conversion and missed on two two pointers. And it looks like they'll go for the two pointer here. able to score on their first possession. Crenshaw's going for two. And the camera went for two as well. So it's 26 nothing right now. First drive of the half, third quarter. 26 nothing in favor of Crenshaw. Well, they got the kick, not able to do anything, three and out. And Harthon goes on a, uh, the Crenshaw goes on a 52 yard drive for the first score. And they get their two point conversion. We mentioned before, Dave, losing a 
playing across town, and they're facing Las Nevada's number one ranked team, which is the Las Vegas High. So there's probably a good football affair going on across town. And I think you said something about uh, you saw something to the effect of losing her through 15 passes in a game. Yep. Call it a miracle. That Call kick what you want. Well, that one is bobbled. Crenshaw is going to recover. And they'll start off deep in their territory. Well, I say that to say for anyone who knows losing her football, 15 passes is more than they attempt in a season. So, <laughs> to, so for 15 passes in one game for the losing her Olympians, who we'll see on our next uh, telecast against Redondo, that's pretty impressive. Coach Mike Witt again, another year as uh, head coach for the losing her Olympians. And they remain in the Bay League. Mm -hmm. And they do... Uh, one thing you do have to say about them is everyone knows who scouts them. The running offense is 98% of their offense, but they do it well. They don't make many penalties. You don't see the holding and the clip. I mean, other coaches will say they do, and they just don't get called for it, but they do run efficiently, and they just seem to change backs every year and get the job done. So if they get any kind of a passing attack, they're going to be somewhat dangerous as that ball is picked off. Ball is intercepted, thrown right into the hands of Anthony Moore in coverage. And it's been a shell-shocked early start to this second half for Raheem Stevens. Three and out in the first drive, first pass here. And it's uh, just thrown right over the middle where he's been trying to throw a lot of them. And this one is picked off. So the Crenshaw Cougars right back in business, up 26 to nothing. It's definitely a turnover the Hawthorne Cougars cannot afford. They'll keep it on the ground. This one's fumbled. Who's got it? Looks like he dropped it and picked it up. And a little basketball there at that time. When you think of basketball and Crenshaw, you think of uh, Willie West and the Willie West Pavilion. So getting, getting set for a little of that. Crenshaw known probably more for basketball than for football. And it's a handoff straight up the middle. Hit it for the goal line. It's going to be downed at the five-yard line. Stanley Collins on the carry that time. Dave, the Cougars' defense on that play looked dumbfounded. No one attacked the runner. Everyone just stayed in their zone. And no one is basically putting pressure on the ball carrier or the quarterback. And when you consider, Scott, the fact that a lot of them have to go two ways, they've got to be tired. Definitely. And they go back the same way, Stanley Collins. And gets it down to about the two-yard line. And so now that uh, Hawthorne's in the Ocean League, Dave, it's a little bit refurbished now. We have Hawthorne, North High, Redondo, Santa Monica, and West Torrance all in the Ocean League and in the Bay League, which should be a hard-fought league throughout the season as upper echelon teams that were in the Bay League before are still there with Beverly Hills, Inglewood, Losinger, Maricosa, and Peninsula all in the Bay League. That's going to be a dogfight throughout the year. Yes, it will. As a tackle made right there for no gain, it'll bring up third and goal. Talking about the Ocean League for a second, uh, where Inglewood, where mm -hmm. Coach French comes from, has done well the past eight, past couple of years. Inglewood losing to Paso Robles two years ago in the Division 10 championship. Last year, Santa Monica came out of there and I, I believe won Division 10. Santa Monica doing a good job. Mm -hmm. So it's a lower division, but some good competition. Fumbled at the goal line. But the way things have gone tonight for Crenshaw, I think they fell on it. But Stanley Collins was the ball carrier. And who falls on it for Crenshaw? Looks like big Brandon McBain. But the question is, did he cross the goal line? I think he did. They put 32, put six months. Yes, they did. That's going to be a touchdown. It'll be interesting if we can see that, see who recovered it. Ball was carried by Stanley Collins. It looked like McBain, number 52, offensive lineman, picked it up. So they'll go for the one-point conversion. It's 32 zip right now. Kevin Man Manjavier from the soccer team to do the kicking. And uh, the point is through. So it's 33 zip. In the third quarter. A turnover leading to a touchdown, two play. Two possessions, two scores for the Crenshaw Cougars. 
Are we talking about the Ocean League there for a second where Hawthorne is this year? And it doesn't really get that easy. Some of the teams in that uh, Ocean League, here we take a look at the touchdown play. And who, uh, who recovers the fumble? Get off, off the bottom of the pile. Who's going to come up with it? Another tough game is going on across town as what's being marked as the game of the year, Dave, which has a Banning 2-0. Their first 2-0 starts since 1991. Going up against Americosa Mustangs, who are ranked uh, number one in the Daily Breeze, and they're 2-0. They're the two-time defending Bay League champs. A lot of people think Maricosta is going to reach a Division Three championship game. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Maricosta, of course, will play against Losinger this year, the other team that we cover here on Lawndale Community Cable Channel 22. There's the time. I believe that's nine. I believe that's a nine and not a four, although I can't be uh, been tricked by, the, by that before. It's uh, 33 to nothing. Harthon Cougars on the definite wrong end of the score. They go back on offense for the third time. At this point, I guess you kind of treat it like a practice. You want to try to get things done. Work on things for next week. And a snap that's bobbled and tipped. Same man almost picking it off again. Anthony Moore getting a hand on it. So this is our first telecast. And we are, of course, on in a couple of areas. Lawndale Community Cable Channel 22 that... Gets into Lawndale and El Camino Village. Hawthorne Community Cable. A lot of their uh, troops are here tonight working with General Strick Fatten. Hawthorne and Del Air area. Time Warner Community Cable. We saw their, their soldiers here. Channel 6. Lawndale, Hawthorne, Gardena, and El Segundo. Are we on in Mexico? No, get Not on across the border yet? <laughs> They're picking us up on, down there on the short wave, I guess. Here's the handoff, Thomas Brown. I thought we were on in Gardena. We were on in Gardena. Yes, we are. We, we, we Gardena. How about Torrance? Are we on in Torrance this year? We have uh, Torrance is a little slow this year. I haven't worked it out. They'll, they'll, we'll, we'll get them on here some way somehow. But we've got a couple, uh, about five more broadcast. At least five tentative. We could add one or more to it, depending on how things go throughout the year and uh, for us tonight we are of course are working out the major bugs the major problems yours truly uh, your announcer here didn't know we were doing this game until just a day ago thank you guys you say he they say two day I say one now whose word are they going to take they can't hear you they can hear me so they're going to have to believe me I say yesterday and they're not no way they can verify that <laughs> Th third down talk communicating with the truck and we do this because uh, we've got to keep you entertained in the game, not too entertaining, so perhaps we can provide a little flavor here if we can. But, of course, important to uh, the parents and the friends and the people that watch this, we uh, by no means wish to make fun of or demean anything because those young men are giving their all out there tonight. And, uh, of course, sports is not the only thing. They're here to hit the books and get an education, go on to college, and... Uh, do whatever they have to do, live fine lives, and mm. want to have a good time I and come out of here. I think the Crenshaw Cougar punt returner touched that ball, and it's going to be Hawthorne Cougar ball down at the 15. Well, if that's the case, that's the biggest play. Then we talked about the punter. That's the biggest play of the night. I'm going to discuss it right here. Crenshaw saying no. And when all is said and done, what could have been the highlight of the night turns out to go for naught. And with uh, the coaching staff already perturbed at what they feel has not been some officiating, you heard them tell Deborah Savage, heard Mr. French tell Deborah Savage right before the start of the third quarter, he's not satisfied with the officials. They're not going to like that call either as the Cougars get the ball right back. Well, the, the question has been asked that if you criticize officials at the high school level, do coaches get fined? 
Oh. I believe that only happens in the NFL because college coaches don't. Okay. Enough Mike. In that case, Mike Ditka must be broke. Well, he, he doesn't <laughs> coach anymore. Maybe that's why he's out of a job. He might have bankrupt the Bears and the Saints while he was there. He had some classic post-game press conferences. One guy, they take it, you know, you can I remember many years ago, Dick Vermeil, I think when he left the Eagle, of course, he went on and had success as Harth, timeout is taken by Hawthorne their first time out just to get things straight. And he, of course, won a Super Bowl with uh, the Rams a couple of years ago. And when he retired from the Eagles, he just said, I am burned out. Because what, what we don't realize, Scott, with the, the, and I saw something on in channel surfing last night, saw something about the NFL uh, that, that was on, on, on TV, is that these guys go to work basically nine months out of the, I mean, they, well, first of all, in a week, they have no time off. They're there all day. They're watching, the game is Sunday. They're watching films Monday morning. They're preparing. It's like preparing for a war. Mm -hmm. And not, not just in terms of the X's and O's, but it's the mental preparation that, that you've got to go with. Here, of course, on this level, well, it's tough, too, because you have someone like uh, Michael French, who's been tough to t reach over. He has to teach. He has to do other things. So so do most of the coaches. So um, it's time. Preparing for football is a little like preparing for war. It's a yeah. tough mental thing. It's your X and O s uh, strategy. That definitely is true, Dave. And so you see a lot. When you see someone like a Mike Ditka blow up and we s in the media, we laugh at it. You just kind of consider the week he's had to go through. And especially when things don't go your way and, and you lose and this pass not going the way of the Crenshaw Cougars. In and out of the hands there. Nice. He got open. Keith Little got open on the play, beat his man, but not able to hold on. That would have been a pretty completion had it gone. Even though that pass went for naught for the Crenshaw Cougars, I think that... Uh typifies where the Hawthorne Cougars stand in regards to the Crenshaw Cougars is, as we saw Little just completely outrun the uh, defensive back for the Hawthorne Knight Cougars. Crenshaw Cougars just have too much athleticism, too much speed, and they're a little bit too strong for the Hawthorne Knight Cougars. And that's probably the case, being the case that the Crenshaw Cougars are in Division One, and the Hawthorne Knight Cougars are down in, I believe, Division 10. Yep, Division 10. And the, and the difference, of course, is the CIF city section, Los Angeles, as opposed to the southern section. Hawthorne plays in the CIF southern section, Division 10. They've dropped down from Division 3. The Hawthorne Cougars play in that very, where everybody is tough in the city section, it seems. There's really no easy game up there in uh, the L.A. city section. And when they go to the playoffs, they have your championship division and your invitational division. And it's tough to win both of those. They, they play the, those games at the Coliseum in December. They play some smash mouth football in the LA City. It's tough in the southern section too, of course. Anyone who's seen the, the likes of the modern days and the Long Beach Polys of the world, that, that's, that's certainly no joke. Uh, some folks who follow the games here, seeing the likes of Peninsula, Miracosta, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. that's tough football. The Hawthorne Cougars, of course, winning the Bay League back in 98. And since then, they haven't gotten quite back to that level, and it's been a little tough. On the carry there, see Darry Odway. Rufus Washington not with us tonight. Oh, he can, now he can start to tell you some stories going all the way back to the late 80s that he has been involved here doing Hawthorne and losing her sports, both football and basketball. He's seen uh, young men come to these schools and go on to college and to the pros. And he does have many a story to tell. And he'll be back telling those stories in a couple of weeks. Number 80 barely got off the field Cougars, and the Cougars jump off sides. We were uh, beforehand mentioning the Bay and Ocean League, how there's been uh, some changes in the league. You might wonder where did some of the other teams go? There's been a few teams missing. They're still in the South Bay, South Bay Athletic Association. They're in the new Pioneer League, and those teams consist of Sentinel, Culver City, El Segundo, Morningside, South Torrance, and Torrance. So those are the teams that have exited the Ocean and Bay League and now are in the newly formed Pioneer League. And what uh, division? Is that still Division Three, or is that? Uh, I believe that's down to Division 10 because yeah. El Segundo's in Division 10. Well, that man isn't tired as of yet. Darry Odway 
Couple of big carries tonight. Big fullback. And you were mentioning how athletic this uh, Crenshaw Cougars team looks. What, what's really scary, I guess uh, it was, it was a flag on that play. Looks like that one's going to come back. When you talk to their coaching staff, what upsets them is the fact that they're not able to keep what they feel are some of their better athletes in the neighborhood in the city section because of the fact that, for instance, at Crenshaw, they don't have lights. They can't play games at night. They play right, of course, in the heart of the Crenshaw district. And uh, Coach Garrett was talking about how, uh, I believe that's City Councilman Mark Ridley Thomas's area, or even Thomas or Nate Holden, that uh, they'd like to get lights at their fields. They haven't been able to get it. And in some instances, they don't have the facilities that, say, teams that play in the Valley do, the San Fernando Valley, which is as a fumble, and I think the Hawthorne Cougars have grabbed it. Yes, it is. Yes, they have. They've fallen on the ball. And with the recovery, looks to be Bontar Quinn. It's amazing, Dave. One would think with the uh, Crenshaw Cougars turning over the ball four times now that Hawthorne Cougars would have been up into this game all the way into the fourth quarter, but that's not the case here. They just have not been able to capitalize on these numerous Crenshaw Cougar turnovers. And they've got another opportunity to see if they can get something done. Well, we, we were talking again about the uh, interesting situation with a lot, a lot of the teams that play in the Coliseum League in the city, such as Crenshaw, the Dorsey, the Fremonts, those sort of schools that they're concerned sometimes that some of their better athletes in their neighborhoods escape to the Tafts of the world up there in the valleys and uh, the schools that John Elway went to and, and that sort of thing. So there's a nice little run. Nice footwork, big block. The best run of the night for Thomas Brown. Flag coming in there late. A uh, couple of times tonight at the end of the plays, these flags come in. I don't know if that's a little taunting extracurricular activities, but as you mentioned, the good block to Spring Brown, who has been one of their brightest offensive spots of the season. While we make, make the point about uh, the players from the inner city going to the Valley, it's also going to be interesting because as everyone in the area knows, and well, this run's going to come back, every, everyone in the area knows if you live in Los Angeles that uh, there's going to be that referendum on the ballot as to whether the San Fernando Valley and Los Angeles are going to split and become two separate cities. Oh, they, block. Now, what are they? Are they trying to call a clip there on that, or is this something came in? Probably something after the play, because that that didn't look like a clip. That had to have been after the play. Well executed block from this point of view. Mm -hmm. And we have an eye formation. And we have a new signal caller. Not getting much on, on this. Looks to be Richard Badamana in the ball game now at the QB position. We mentioned uh, Raheem Stevens banged up the first couple of weeks. So they go to Badamana. He's a senior. He's in there at the QB spot. Coach Michael French coming in from the Inglewood program and having his work cut out for them. I think the coaching staff is dressed nicely tonight. And those nice polo shirts. Time running down here in this third quarter. Trying to rush up to the line quickly. And he slips. Rush on, going to throw with the left hand, and it's picked off, intercepted. All being run back. It's Anthony Moore. On the interception, that's his second in the inter interception of the night. Flag will come in after the play. Frustration all over the place. That'll be the last play of the third quarter. And the quarter, of course, will end on this negative note. Can you go? Yeah, I know. So Dave, coming in the season, the Cougars are ranked number nine by the Daily Breeze. Um, would you say that their ranking has dropped a little with their last three performances? Well, I'll have to speak to some of their writers. I'd have to say yes. These last three performances by the Cougars, even though they have, you got to give them credit where credit's due, they've had one of the tougher non-league schedules. Face it, they, got, they went up against Loyola, who's nationally ranked. They're ranked 18th in the country. Then they went against Long Beach Jordan, who's a Division I school, 
who is ranked, I believe, in the top 15 in Division One, and now tonight they're going up against LA City Power and Crenshaw. So, give them credit where credit is due. They haven't had the easiest non-league schedule so far. And of course, that's a matter of uh, some coaches feel that you want to give them a, a hardest preseason schedule that you can to get them prepared for their league. I've had other coaches say, well, you know, we're down in Division 10. If we schedule a game against a Division 1 squad, uh, I'm going to have to, you know, the emergency room at the hospital is going to have to be open for half of my squad. There's no need to do that. So it's uh, an either-or situation, and the uh, coaching staff at Arthon electing to go to the very tough preseason this year, feeling that it'll get them tested for Division 10. Ocean League Division 10, which, uh, as we stated, is not going to be easy. Got some good, good squads there this year that they're going to have to deal with. So now the Cougars' last W dates back all the way to November 2001. The last W was in that uh, classic Mayor's Cup game against the losing Olympians, that 15 to 14 win. The last second two-point conversion got the W for them. So. Oh, yes, we remember that very well as we start the fourth quarter. Crenshaw on the offense following the interception. It's been a while since they tasted victory. And they lost in the first round of the playoffs. Both uh, losing her and Harthon made the postseason last year and both went out in the first round. No, Hawthorne ended up not making it. Oh, they, last yeah, that's right. They, that, that was, uh, they, yes, that's right. They lost, lost to Beverly the, uh, Hills last game of the season. You're they right. They win that game to make the playoffs. So next week they have Peninsula. That's uh, not going to get any easier. Peninsula's Certainly not. Peninsula's off a 2 one start. So. And they're, they're a perennial force, of course. They just seem to reload every year. Yeah, from, from last year, now that it come, come to think of it, it looked like it was losing her that was going to have the tougher road to the postseason. Looked like Harthon was going to be a shoe in but they didn't uh, make it. They lost that last game of the year. I, get, I think I believe it was against Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. That's a game game we did and losing her one on the road and they got in and it was a situation where there was going to be almost a three way tie and yeah. So That's didn't. when uh, Lorenzo Bursi, the star running back from Beverly Hills just ate him up and uh, he's no longer there. Lorenzo Bursi took advantage of a law that came into play in 1994, which was uh, anyone's eligible for academic transfers, and he transferred to Long Beach Poly on the offseason, so he's no longer at Beverly Hills. Controversial law that got passed back in 94. Is, uh, some schools, even some coaches, don't approve it as they like to have their students in their local area stay where they're meant to be and not transfer to, say, a powerhouse like Bercy did to Long Beach Poly. Because in a way, it keeps uh, the powerful high school programs up on top and doesn't give any room for some of uh, the lower, non-upper echelon programs to move up in the ranks and build their own power. So there's pros and cons. It gets debated all the time. And you hear a lot of coaches lament that as they lament the long run right here down the sideline. Another fine run. This time it's Anthony Moore getting the carry in the backfield. We're seeing a lot of Cougar substitutes come in now in their fair share of play. Yeah, it's still a long season to go, so no need to wear anybody out unnecessarily. I'm sure French will get his uh, program up and up pretty soon here. He's pretty smart football mind. He played back in USC, I believe, back in the mid-'80s. Star at USC, so. We'll see what he could do with this Hawthorne High Cougar football program. And he mentioned USC off to a fairly decent start this season for them. From what I heard, uh, Coach French was going to be taking an assistant coaching position at El Camino. And this coaching position became available and ended up taking the head coaching job here. Well, this time out taken to get things a little organized here in the fourth quarter. And now is that, that the best? That's 
that little face you see there, that's me, folks. That's the best they that's the best they can do here on the get get, get and me in. The, and then there's that's his hand. Let's move all of this and may, then maybe they can they can see us. Okay. Uh, how about that? Oh, they're, they're looking at us from, from over there. <laughs> Fifteen minutes of fame, Dave. Something something like that. Something. Cougars jump off. Another mental mistake there on their defensive line. It's a pretty tough start here for the Cougars this season. So what do you think is going to pull out on that big uh, crosstown action between Maricosa and Banning? They're both 2-0. Oh. You know, I haven't given him much thought. It just hasn't been totally on my mind all week. I've been, let's see, thinking kind of like what are the uh, – Dodgers' chances of holding on and holding off the Giants. It, it's still kind of baseball season for me, you know. Yeah. In many yeah. ways, not for the not for my Mets. It has they haven't had quite a their. Uh, no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Started to say their season at. Well, uh, I was gonna say their season has gone up in smoke, but <laughs> I uh, think uh, you guys can edit that out of the tape. As we all know, Dave's a major major league baseball fan. Baseball guru of the Channel 22 staff. So a little some, something, something like that. <laughs> Cougars almost jump off again. When we talk about baseball, we have seen some good baseball games played here at uh, this school, which uh, with Coach Jeff Hines. Baseball field is actually where our production crew is got their trucks and everything set up there they're right actually out on the right field line where we're set up here tonight and they've done some work on this facility they did a little uh did a little rebuilding here on the track field uh, last year the grass looks a lot uh grass looks like we were both down there on the field tonight it looks better than it's uh, in other years you could barely make out Yard markers here. Rufus and I, we'd, we'd be joking about, is that the 30 or the 40? Or you can, you can see everything fairly well tonight. Grass looks green. The paint is nice. From the Hawthorne point of view, it's uh, just the only the score, only the lights on the scoreboard and what the scoreboard says in terms of uh, who's ahead and who's not. That's about the only bad thing. Well, before the game, Crenshaw Cougars coach, Coach Garrett, Stated he wanted his team to play an all-around complete game in order for them to win. I don't think they've done that with all the turnovers they have, but hey, they're still up 33 to nothing. Interesting comment that he told me before the game, Dave. He told me that since I think he took the helm back in 88, they've had uh, 74 of their former football players graduate from uh, universities and colleges. He even stated some of the uh, graduated from Harvard, Yale, not to go to uh, actually play football there, but actually just graduated. So some of them were just students. Some were student athletes at going to these universities and colleges. That's a great accomplishment and something he's very proud of. And as uh, Crenshaw takes a timeout, we, we, we were mentioning a while ago that, you know, we, a situation like this where the game is way out of hand is, is no doubt. And, you know, we're just kind of talking with whatever comes to mind and we don't want to make light of certain things that go on as you see the, the time and the score but basically that's what you you play for it's more than just the downs and the tackles of course that's fun but you have to put everything in perspective a number one you don't want anyone to get hurt out there that's number one uh you want people the the purpose of going to school is to get to have some fun to graduate and to, to go on to something better so when you can do that, when you can have some fun and just kind of keep it all in perspective, that's what it's all about. It's uh, Now, when you're in the pros, yeah, there's winning and losing. Well, uh, but then again, you're paid so well that you don't have to really care when you get to the <laughs> NFL. They're saying that's uh, the difference between the NFL of 30 years ago or 30 or 40 years ago when you weren't paid that well and you could be cut from week to week. But uh, at this level, you just have to look at, see the whole picture. Number one, you don't want to get anyone hurt. That, that's uh, number one. And, hey, there is a tomorrow. You just... Uh, Go on to tomorrow and have a good time as they're going to attempt a field goal here. That's what they call the timeout for. So this will be a 35-yard attempt. Kevin Maneever, Bryant Thompson to hold. 
well short. You got to put somebody back in the end zone. Maybe try to run that out. I don't know if they're <laughs> going to run that thing out. So that'll come out to the 20. Touchback. About 7.48 to go. And Harthon's got another shot. Uh, we saw during the last break. Stevens walking up, rather warming up. Raheem Stevens on the sideline. He was out for that last series. And maybe he's going to go. But it looks like he is going to go back in. See, those guys, they're, they're losing, but they know there's a tomorrow. And they're looking back at the cheerleaders. Dave, have you, have you probably noticed uh, the Hawthorne Cougar offense has sort of opened up a little. It's more of a passing attack. As you can see right here, they're in a shotgun formation. One of those key reasons is uh, they've had a addition, former North Torrance, I believe it's North Torrance, head coach Brent Peabody. He's not actually on the staff for the Hawthorne High Cougars, but he's uh, given Coach French a little uh, assistance when it comes to the offensive attack this year. So that's a big addition for the Cougar staff. There's Richard Body Mana on the catch that time for Hawthorne. Oh, they pick up the first down. I guess from their point of view, it would be good for them to just at least crack the scoreboard. Get off the donut, as they used to say. Crenshaw Cougars would love that shutout, love to come out road victory and defense pitching the shutout. Bad snap. He's had a couple of those tonight. Snaps that have not been that crisp. Of course, being in the shotgun, that uh, doesn't help. Mm -hmm. So another step backward. We've got uh, Deborah Savage roaming around the sideline someplace. We've heard from her once tonight. Interesting to see what kind of scoops she's got, what, what, she, what she'll come up with. Thus far, Dave, uh, Hawthorne Cougars showing against Loyola is a little more impressive than this as they lost 34 to six on uh, the first week and right now they're down 33 to nothing. So uh, Loyola's a little bit more talented of a school than Crenshaw this year. So. Well, that last pass had pickoff written all over it and well, they were trying to set up a screen, but Fortunately, from the Hawthorne point of view, Thomas Brown able to make the catch, but not going very far. Well, brings up a third down. Let's see, is Deborah getting something for us? Deborah Savage? Or is she just trying to stay warm down on the sidelines? It's third and 15. Shotgun formation. Five wideouts here. No one in the backfield. Well, we shall see the punter again. Big rush put on that time and had to get it away quickly with no one in the backfield to block. Even though Hawthorne and Losinger are separated in terms of leagues, one good thing, Dave, the Mayor Cup is still going to go on this year. Yeah, that, that's it. that is true. And that... Uh, of course, we'll have that for you. That is our last regular season game of the year in November. And they are going to play it here this year because they're not in the same division anymore. They, they played it here last year. And well, this was a design fake, which is not going to fool anybody. And it's fumbled on top of it. But uh, nevertheless, it's going to be Crenshaw ball. So at the 5.02 mark of the fourth quarter, Goes back to the Crenshaw Cougars, who've been in command all night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, high school football in this neck of the woods just wouldn't be the same without the Maris Cup, would you say, Dave? Of course not. That's, uh, they always get up for that game. It's uh, When they play it down in Losinger, of course, you get the uh, the fire trucks and, and everything that, that, that come through there. And here the fans are usually always, always up for it. The stands are always shaken and the uh, crowd is into it. Uh, 
Well, this is a quick carry, quick hitter up the middle. Stanley Collins has gotten a chance to carry the ball a couple of times. Five minutes to go now in the ball game. Can Crenshaw crack the end zone again? Have you made your pick so far for the Ocean League, Dan? Hawthorne, <coughs> North High, Redondo, Santa Monica, or West Torrance? Who am I, <coughs> excuse me, who am I picking? Yeah. I, I never pick things. I'm an objective journalist. All right. If I were to make a pick, I'd have to go with, I'd have to say Redondo this year. And we'll be seeing them next week. I don't, I never make a pick until it's all over. You know that. <coughs> that means you're not losing any money. Betting on the National Football League. I'm sure Commissioner Alvin Pete Rosell would taking the Bengals and 10 points. <laughs> you heard it right here, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Goodman. I'm sure Commissioner Alvin Pete Rosell is awaiting your response. <laughs> flashing back to the odd couple and flashing to the end zone for what appears to be another score, unless they're gonna say he's down at the one. That was a... Uh Pretty good Howard Cosell impersonation, correct? Uh, something like that. <laughs> Two thumbs up. The old odd, odd couple uh, episode with uh, Oscar Madison and Howard Cosell going at it in the broadcast booth. And uh, saying, Cosell, uh, Madison, how do you know that the Bengals are going to win? He goes, I've laid 10 points on the Bengals as uh, Hughes <laughs> attempts, to, attempts to get across. And he goes, I don't believe I said that on the air. And Cosell just let him have it, as he let many people have it. Right here, Damian Hughes gets into the end zone again. 39 nothing. I did have the fortune of meeting Mr. Howard Cosell once in my life in the 70s in New York. And uh, he was quite a figure, very tall man, tall in stature, very confident very very opinionated and uh, it was a pleasure at that age at that particular age and point of my career to shake his hand and have him pat me on the shoulder and said hang in there young man you're going to get well, I'm still waiting to get <laughs> still waiting to get there but it was at least nice nice to meet him that particular day the point after touchdown is good 40 to nothing and he, he's missed there aren't too many people like uh, for uh, Love him or hate him, he was a very controversial person, but um, I think we wouldn't have, as, as you take a look at the lopsided score there, what we call Monday Night Football probably would not have been w w without him. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, he just made it a cult classic, cult thing there in the 70s, which they have yet to recapture that. He laid the foundation. And if he were here, he would say, and don't you forget it. Well, this one is anytime we're talking about Cosell and Monday Night Football, you know it's because of what you just saw there on the score. A little short kick. And, of course, this is what you do in these kind of situations. And as I uh, used to say back, back in high school when uh, covering the game and a team is lost like this and, and going as a high school reporter and saying, what are you guys trying to do when the season was over? The players would say to me, hey, you want to know the truth? We're trying not to get killed out there. And that's, uh, that's what, especially Hawthorne on that side of the score, that's definitely what they're thinking right at about now. They've got uh, many more games to go in this season. The season's still very young. I'm sure the Cougars are going out there right now to try to get that big goose egg off the scoreboard. That they'd like to accomplish. Show a little self-dignity here. He has him open downfield. Mm. I mean, here's your chance to work on that in a game, in a game situation. You're going to do that in practice. Here's a game situation. And getting ready for next week. Against Peninsula, which, uh, of course, you mentioned not going to be any easy, easier. Mm -hmm. Peninsula traditionally a very tough program. And when you look at the Bay League this year, Dave, it's just so many talented teams. You have Beverly Hills, Inglewood, Losinger, 
course, Maricosa, they're the odds-on favorite. And Peninsula, it's like, it's going to be a dogfight throughout the year. Talented teams there in the Bay League this year. England was off to a good start. They're 2-0 and playing tonight. Redondo's 2-0. and Maricosa's 2-0. and Peninsula played their third game yesterday and won. They're 2-1. and And Beverly Hills, I'm not too sure on their record. I'm pretty sure they've already notched one win, so... It's going to be a dog fight. Well, some of those teams you mentioned we will see. We'll be seeing Redondo and losing her in our next game. We're also going to see Peninsula play losing her. Ocean League wise, who will be seeing this year, Dave? We, in the Ocean League, we have Hawthorne, we have North Torrance. You said Redondo, we're going to be seeing them. Santa Monica and West Torrance. Any Ocean League teams other than the Cougars? Any Ocean League teams other than the Cougars? Well, it looks like we're going to get uh, North Torrance. Okay. And uh, West Torrance. North, right. North and West. North's off to a slow start this year. They're 0 2, and West is at 1 1. Actually, West picked up their only win so far this year against North. Approaching the two minute mark, 40 to nothing. Losing her, rather, uh, Hawthorne on the bad end tonight. When you look at this realignment, it seems like uh, the lower end teams seem to have gone to Pioneers. You have Centinella, Culver City, El Segundo, Morningside, South Torrance, and Torrance. Those throughout the years haven't been too dominating of teams in the Bay and Ocean League. It seems like they've sent them all to the Pioneer League. Not to say that they're not fair squads, but... They're not the most talented in regards to the Bay and Ocean League in traditional form. From what I'm told, the purpose of this whole realignment is traditionally eight teams make it to the playoffs in the South Bay Athletic Association. And the purpose of switching it up to three leagues was to get a ninth team into the playoffs between the three leagues. So that's a good thing, I guess. We've got one audition, or hoping, I guess that's not a guarantee. Well, the realignment is always political. As we wind things down here, one minute, 20 seconds to go in the ball game. 40 nothing. We're going to be back in a second. Crenshaw with the ball now, starting what will probably be the last possession of the game. Clock going to wind down to about the minute mark. And the, the somewhat sad question being asked right now is, when was the last time the Hawthorne Cougars were ever shut out? That's what uh, Scott's saying. Well, that's something Rufus might know. He's, uh, <laughs> he's been here since 86, 87. I'm definitely the wrong guy to ask. Now, I believe you said your mom was here when, when the Beach Boys were here. Mm -hmm. well, they, uh, they didn't play. They, they supposed, well, only Dennis surfed. Dennis w Wilson was the only real surfer. The, the rest of them were just you know, sur surfing in name only. He, uh, he, of course, uh, well, well, two of the Wilson brothers, only Brian, only Brian remains. Uh, Dennis had that uh, tragic accident back in the 80s. And Carl, Carl passed a couple of years ago. As they took that uh, picture, that famous picture in front of Harthon, it was on one of their early albums. When we were talking about realignment, Dave, and it's political, where did you stand on the realignment when... Uh, American and National League split up to three divisions in each league. When did that happen? Baseball. Oh, oh, oh you mean okay? I, I th okay. Were you more of a traditionalist? You wanted to say National American, or did you care when they split it up? Uh, split up, split up back, back to Central, and then eh, not. Uh, it, it didn't keep me up at night too much, and it didn't lose any sleep. I think it's plus because uh, when you look at it, there's two extra teams in the playoffs. And I think it was back in 94, teams like the Giants won 100-plus games, and they didn't even get into the playoffs. So it's given those teams that have superb seasons a chance to actually get in the playoffs and fight for the World Series. As we've seen, already one wild card team win the World Series in the Florida Marlins. They won it. Well, no wild card tonight as that will run down. And uh, this ball game is mercifully ended for the Hawthorne Cougars. They take it on the chin, 40 to nothing, to the Cougars from Crenshaw, the Coliseum League and the city section. And the players will shake hands and 
walk out of here and live another day, get ready for next week. Hawthorne with a lot to think about. Here tonight after losing a ball game such as this. And you just gotta wonder for a second, is there anything with the season still relatively young and a lot of ball to be played? What can you take away from a game like this? What uh, can you redeem from, from a loss uh, 40 to nothing? Well, we are going to perhaps ponder that issue. Deborah Savage is down on the sidelines and uh, she is going to be talking to someone about that, we presume. Well, she is gathering her thoughts together. Looks like she's hunting down Coach Friends from the staff. That'd be very interesting to see uh, what his take would be on a situation like this, uh, losing this, this kind of a game, not uh, very easy. You saw the comments at the half about the officiating, which he wasn't happy with. His comments at the half, Dave, did stand true. As you've seen the predominant amount of the backups come in about halfway through the third quarter. He was not too happy of a guy. So on a 40 to nothing loss, we get ready for Peninsula next week. And Harthon will have a lot of work to do to get themselves composed. Crenshaw Cougars finish their preseason and then they'll get on into the Coliseum League for their tough schedule. And uh, are we going to Deborah? All right, Deborah's gone home already. She's gotten on the subway. So with a 40 nothing, uh, I wonder if that fan had a was with us tonight at some point, but uh, not anymore. And didn't didn't miss much. And again, the question becomes, uh, Scott, what can you take away from something like this? Uh, if if you're the Hawthorne Cougars, how do you possibly uh, for a new coach in uh, Mr. French, who is trying to instill something new into this program, some new blood, and get kind of a winning tradition or at least a, a feeling that they can compete here. What do you do to regroup after a loss like this? Um, if I was a player on the Cougars, I would distinctly remember this game throughout the year because I don't think they're going to get a loss like this going in the Bay League action. I think what you got to get away from this is sleep, in, sleep on it, just remember this loss, and remember that feeling that they're going to have after this game. And don't let that feeling go. As the season progresses, you just got to remember that feeling. And I'm sure they won't like that feeling. And they're not going to They're gonna try their best not to let it happen again. So you just got to remember this loss. Take it for what it was. And take it on the chin and just rebound and get ready for next week's game against Peninsula. Because it's going to be a tough road ahead. It's going to get a little bit easier. And they're not going to see uh, as town of teams as the likes of Crenshaw, Loyola, Long Beach, Jordan. But it's not going to be that much easier. So they got to take the take this one on the chin and rebound and regroup and take what they can from Coach French. All right. And speaking of Coach French, uh, we uh, are in fact going to have uh, Deborah with him momentarily, and uh, we have managed to work that out. Wonder of wonders. And as they compose their thoughts and kind of get it together. And let's uh, let's see what uh, Deborah Savage and Coach Michael French have got to say. Well, guys, I'm here talking to Coach French. Coach French, it was a tough game tonight. How do you feel about the loss for your team? Well, you know, as far as morale goes, it's a bad loss, but we just didn't play well. You know, we had, we made too many mistakes. You can't do that against a a good playoff team, which Crenshaw is. They go to playoffs every year, and we're we're just we're just not a fundamentally sound good football team right now. Now, to your credit, you are a new team, you're, you're a new coach, this is your first year. What are some of the things you're going to try to work on next week and get ready for next week's game? I'm going to play every, all the young guys, all in their classroom. I'm, I'm going to get rid of all the seniors, and I'm going to just go with all the young guys. If I'm going to be bad, I'm going to be bad getting better. I'm not going to be bad with guys getting ready to leave. All right, Coach French, good luck next week. Thank you. All right, Scott, Dave, back to you. Well, you, you heard it there. I mean, if that's not a shakeup for you, uh, make, make, make some sense, I, I guess. Uh, you can kind of see where he's coming from. He's going to have the, the underclassmen. He's going to have to make his stake his claim and make his reputation with them. And he's saying uh, if it's going to be a long season, might as well not, uh, it, 
not not spare them, just get them used to it now so that perhaps they can produce by the uh, by their senior season. That was a bold statement made by him. I don't know if that's the right thing to do because most of the talent here on the Cougars ball team is with the seniors. And if that's the case, hey, that's his decision. That's why he's the head coach. I don't think that's the best move. You want to get him – basically non-league is not – nearly as important as league matches so these are if you were to look at it in retrospect these are more like you wouldn't say scrimmages because they count on your win loss record but they're more like tune-ups to get you ready for the league matchups so all right and as we ponder the emotions of that statement we have the coach of the crenshaw cougars standing by and ready to talk so let's go now to robert garrett along with deborah savage we're here talking with Coach Garrett, the coach of Crenshaw Cougars who won tonight. Congratulations on your victory tonight, Coach. How do you feel about it? I feel great. Uh, a victory is a victory. And um, kids played hard. And we have a lot of work yet. Um, we're improving. And um, we're getting better. So, so I'm pleased with the victory. Now, when I talked to you before the game, you said that um, you hadn't seen a tape of Hawthorne, but you wanted to go out and you wanted your kids to play good, sound, fundamental um, ball tonight. So is that what they did, in your opinion? Uh, in spots. You can't take the victory from them. You know, we accept the victory. Fundamentally sound is what our goal or our attempt is. We had some mental errors and we had some penalties. That's not fundamentals. So we have some improvement to do. But overall, we improving from last week and the week before. So our goal is to improve each week. And as long as we improve each week, then we can uh, contend for the title in L.A. City. Now, you say to improve next week. What is something that you're going to work on next week to prepare for next week's game? I think dis discipline we're going to work on and fundamentals, okay? Uh, that's one thing. That's one phase of the game that doesn't show in the box scores. Uh, I think a little bit of things like um, uh, hustle, we got to improve on that. We got to improve on attitude, overall attitude. Uh, we didn't play a complete ball game, in my opinion. The ball game is about 48 min minutes. We're used to playing about 28 minutes. We may have played 30 minutes tonight. We didn't play a complete ball game. So we got to improve on getting better until the ball game is over. So we got to finish the ball game. Okay. Well, congratulations again on the victory. It was a 40-0 shutout. And uh, good luck with your game next week. Thank you. You're welcome. And there you have it, Scott, Dave, back to you. Coach, Ge Coach Garrett from Crenshaw Cougars. All right, thank you very much, Deborah. So we've heard from both of them tonight. And uh, with the 40 to nothing score, they take that back onto their competition. The Harthon Cougars trying to regroup next week for Peninsula. The next time uh, we will grace these microphones, we'll be down at uh, Losinger in their field, out in the elements, with uh, Redondo Seahawks coming to play the Losinger Olympians. And uh, that's coming your way in two weeks. So uh, we'd like to thank everybody that helped make these broadcasts possible. Here tonight, uh, Dave Marks along with Scott Goodman. Uh, you just heard from Deborah Savage. Thank uh, General Tom Strickfadden for getting everything underway and uh, all of the folks at uh, Harthon Cable, Time Warner Cable, Lawndale Community Cable. Another fine job. First job of the year. Tough one to do. Always the first one is, is the toughest. They'll get a little smoother as the season goes on and progresses. And, of course, when we get the veteran Rufus back, everything will just go, uh, just fall right into place. Well, the final here tonight for the uh, Hawthorne Cougars. They lose this game by a score of 40 to nothing. They are still winless on the year, but have quite a way to go. They'll try to regroup next week for Peninsula. That's your final. The Crenshaw Cougars 40, Hawthorne Cougars nothing. I'm Dave Marks, speaking for Scott Goodman and everyone here at Lawndale Community Cable Channel 22, saying so long. See you next time. Good night.